Hi guys and welcome back to Anton R91's YouTube channel and more progress on the petrol electric 5 inch gauge railway locomotive and just to confirm this is video part 5 right I have taken it to the club over the weekend oh sorry over the week actually and very successful as usual trial and error and I've found out the weaknesses and the strengths of the locomotive um, and just to confirm that in this video I will show a short clip, the only clip I actually managed to get of the video running along the club track, it's only about 20 seconds long but you get a good sort of representation of it actually running along um, I'm not on it or behind it, I'm just running with the camera but there you go, you get to see it anyway Right, so the main things I'm going to talk about in this is the fact that the pulley belt drive system, let me come around this side actually the pulley and belt drive here. So let me get that belt out. As you say, you can see it. It's here. Um, the system worked very well. Sort of shortly. Uh, it's a one-kilometer track, roughly, maybe a little bit longer, and it lasted about one time round the track before becoming loose and slack, and then not not um, being very very grippy. Uh, I think the problem is as well that it is only two-wheel drive and at the moment I this was the front of the locomotive this was the rear and it, wheels spun everywhere um, as well I've, I'm using aluminium wheels like I said in I think video part one um, and aluminium on steel the aluminium is going to give so the aluminium slips everywhere as well as the fact that the the wheel flanges I don't know if you can if you can see it but let me zoom in quickly the wheel flanges here these are going to start to give way and loosen um, which is not so good either as they're going to be competing with the steel tracks so I'm going to have to make some steel versions of that as well so sorry about the wind as it's been a windy day so if I get blocked out by the wind I'm sorry but yeah so new set of wheels I'm going to do a chain and sprocket drive now from the motor to there so I'm gonna have to cut through the axle get rid of it get rid of that pulley there because I, I was welded on so I'm gonna have to cut through that and get rid of it I'm also gonna make it four-wheel drive so I'm gonna have not only am I gonna have a chain drive from there to there but I am also gonna have another sprocket next to this one here and that's gonna be run to the rear axle like you can see and it's gonna be four-wheel drive so let's get some more traction what I have managed to do is fabricate. Let me get this, take this camera off. I have managed to fabricate a sort of, or not sort of, a, a, a coupling. So that's, I did manage to actually attach a driving car trolley to that and I sat on it. Didn't go anywhere because, as I said, that being the front, the wheels just spun and I went nowhere. And the only time I actually got someone was when someone else stood on this part adding some weight to it and that actually enabled me to to move about 20 feet before the belt completely went loose so chain and sprocket seems like the way forward for me um, yeah so as I said in this clip I will also attach the the loco running um, bear with me and I'll show you the other little bits and bobs, such as the chain. Right, now just to show you, this is the chain I'm using. It's called the, it's an 8mm T8F, is what they call it. It's a sort of midi moto dirt bike style, style chain. Sorry, I was sort of... Yeah, you can see that um, and this is a uh, the, the chain that came straight to Suffolk this is the normal size chain so you can see in sort of size comparison there the the difference uh, so it, yeah the bottom one is a bit bigger not sure what that's called but it is but bigger. Yeah, as you can see the this is another sprocket off the Suffolk Suffolk punch and it doesn't actually quite quite fit in there whereas you take this stuff and it just 
slots slots in very nicely there so this is the chain I'm going to be running between between the, the the front axle and the rear axle and I'm going to be running the same stuff hopefully even with the same length not too sure yet from the motor here to the to the rear to the front I'm um, sorry the front axle and we're running that as well and that shouldn't obviously that shouldn't slip at all um, then the only thing is the aluminium wheels which I think I will keep um, until they go that is I don't you know don't fix it unless it's broke kind of attitude with that because um, if it's four-wheel drive I shouldn't get that much slip only if it's wet really um, and if I'm jerking the throttle completely open straight away obviously I'm gonna start spinning everywhere but if I do it gradually which I'll get the hang of um, it should work the only other thing i really want to talk about right now is the um axle boxes which are completely non-existent on this loco as well as suspension suspension doesn't really a lot some people have sort of commented saying it's not going to work your project's not going to work unless you have suspension and uh well i managed to get around the track with, without derailing once and it, it worked fine in fact i went around twice and it didn't derail um, so that, that doesn't seem to be a problem on the track I'm on and that's really going to be one of the few tracks I'm going to be using so it, so it seems okay. Um, the only problem is axle boxes is what's happened, I, again I'll take the camera off see if you can see it, I'm not sure if you'll be able to though, is that I've just got the bar going straight through the chassis and what's happened is the inevitable, it's starting to eat away at, I'm not sure if you can see that but there's a lot of, a lot of this up which is there is grease there but it's actually turned quite sort of it's got metal particles in because what I'm doing is I'm just I don't know if you can see that see there's a gap in that corner there and that's the play I've just ground away at this axle this axle's got a massive groove in it now and I probably I hope I haven't worn away my the chassis hole too much because I can get I can replace these a lot easier than this as it's been welded together as you can see there so that's going to be harder to replace so that I'm going to have to fabricate some sort of axle box so that I don't wear the chassis away because having you know again there you go you can you can, you can see that gap sort of coming and going um, that is not good that's really not good so yeah they're the next stages I've got to do really it's a bit, bit of a bit of a process but um, really just involves getting the right gearing ratio going because it was when I was using it and as you'll see in the video it's quite fast really you know it, it doesn't it's a lot faster than it needs to be I think it's got a five or six miles an hour speed limit on the track that I'm at and this this it completely exceeds that you know it, I wouldn't think if it doubles that if not you know maybe 12 miles an hour even you know 12 12 13 miles an hour like this probably doesn't surprise me and that's just too fast especially with my shallow flanges that i've got at the moment it's just gonna it could that is gonna become a disaster um so something's gonna have to be done about the gearing um what i'm going for is i'm actually thinking about a 10 tooth sprocket which is the smallest one i can find for this uh this size chain um the t8f chain and a obviously if i put a 20 tooth on that it's a one to two gear ratio problem is any more than 20 tooth and the diameter is gonna be larger <laughs> than the wheels therefore you know this is already sort of touch and go whether that was going to hit any middle middle railing because it was sort of nearly the the same diameter as the wheels luckily it just missed it by about a millimeter or two so i don't want this chain to hit the top of any points i go through or anything so um yeah so i'm going to try the one to two gearing ratio and see if that works the other thing i don't know what to do is whether to have a small gear on both axles which link them so you have a like a a, t a 10 tooth on here and a 10 tooth on the rear one and have chain between them or to have you know like a 15 to 20 tooth gear a lot bigger linking that to the rear axle. I don't know if it's going to make a difference 
or not you know because obviously there's nothing's one axle is driving the other i know i have to have the same teeth on either either axle but i don't know whether having a smaller gear or a bigger gear is going to make it any easier to pull away or not but i'm going for lots of acceleration on this and not such a top high speed which will hopefully allow me to pull a greater load so i know the wheel size will affect that as well the smaller the wheels the better acceleration the bigger the wheels the higher the top end so yeah that's the they're the things i'm really i'm working on at the moment um i did say i wanted to change the motor to be at a 90 degree angle this here turn it around like that so it's facing the same the same angle as this and using bevel gears but i've realized i'm going to have a a body over the top of this loco anyway so that really doesn't matter so much i really just want to you know get it working i mean i will make a sturdier mount for that motor because as, as i said it wobbles all over the place whereas this one's completely completely fixed but you know i think yeah so that's it so what i'll do is i'm just gonna now put you onto the part of the video of the loco running at the track Right guys, well now you've seen the video of the Loco running, you can see it runs very well. In fact, sorry about the shaky camera, but um, it kept running away from me actually, so I'm trying to run after it, making sure it doesn't derail or anything whilst videoing, running along with a little handheld uh, camera. So that's the reason for the shakiness there. But yeah, it, it, you get the idea is the main thing. Um, so that's it so far guys, that's as much as I'm gonna do. I haven't, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm trained to be a commercial pilot at the moment. I'm going through the ATPL stage, which is quite intense, or very intense theory. I don't have that much time to be messing around with this anymore. Um, I'm the kind of guy I need to get a project pretty much finished, or in my head finished, that is, um, before, you know, otherwise it just plays my mind that I, you know, I can't focus on anything else. So I'm at a stage where it's run now. It has, I have sat on it and it's, pulled me a lot you know it has pulled me along so I'm happy with that I am gonna, I am gonna still continue working on this but the body is the something that's probably gonna take me a while to get done but please stay tuned subscribe comment like um, for, for, for any future videos which I will still be making and I'll still be making them on a regular basis um, in fact I'm gonna order the the sprockets uh, today or tomorrow and get that sorted and then I'll make a proper video of me being poured around the track the last thing is i can't actually work in fact guys if you could comment on this and say what you think would look better having the this side as the front or this side with the engine on as the front because i know actual the small industrial uh diesel locomotives they actually have the engines at the front um i have got that coupling there at the front and i haven't got one here but it's obviously very easy to fabricate one here as well um so yeah in fact i'll like a vote on that and uh see what happens so guys thank you very much for watching and please stay tuned to Anton R91's YouTube channel thank you very much